two really important operators that are used in all different types of probability in methods are called the union and the intersection. Now the union is represented by this letter U, the symbol U, and the intersection is represented by this little bridge here that connect the two events A and B. Now, the colloquial term for union is OR, and the reason for that is because to be part of the union, an element must be in either A or B. So if this is represented in a Venn diagram, then the union is just whatever's in either one of those two events. So we can say the union in this case is just both of the circles you know, colored together. Obviously, it includes the intersection as well, because if something is part of both A and B, then it's included in either A, or B, either A or B, if that makes sense. Now, the intersection is a bit easier to understand. It has to be in both A and B. So if you imagine the intersection of something, it's essentially where they overlap. And this is exactly what the Venn diagram looks like as well. The intersection is just that little bit in there where the two A and B events overlap, essentially when outcomes or a single outcome is part of both A and B. So if we imagine a very basic example, such as rolling a dice, rolling a, let's say, let me just write this on the side, rolling an even number and rolling a number greater than three, they're obviously two different events. The sample space for an even number is two, four, and six. The sample space for rolling a number greater than three is four, five, and six. So we can see that the intersection of these is just what's common in both. So this is what it means when we have you know, different outcomes associated with each event. We can just look at the outcomes that are common in both of them. So in this case, it's four and six because they're in both. Now, if we wanted to find the union, then it's just combining all the elements together. So it'd be two, four, five, and six. Obviously, we don't have to repeat multiple outcomes twice because it's already included once. So there's no need to, for example, put four in twice because it's a single outcome. And we don't have to put six in twice because it's a single outcome. We just put one instance of it into our union. Now, to discuss these, I guess, operators a bit further, we'll go into this example here. So let's have a quick read. 50 people are surveyed and asked whether they like apples or not. The same group are also asked whether they like bananas. 23 participants like apples, while 30 participants do not like bananas. It is also noted that 10 participants do not like both apples and bananas. So we see we've got a bit of information here. And the questions are asking us individual things about different combinations. For example, the first question asks us how many people like apples and bananas, how many people like apples or bananas, how many people like apples but don't like bananas, and you get the picture. Either way, we just need a way of interpreting this information and also representing this information very neatly so we can refer back to it whenever we're trying to answer our questions. Now you can see I've drawn this table here. This table has a couple of different terms. Sometimes it's called a Carnell map. Sometimes it's called a probability table. Either way, it's a table which represents some sort of number. Most, most of the time it's probabilities. But in this case, we'll use it to represent the number of participants because that's the focus of this question. So the bottom right is always the total. In this case, it's 50 participants. Now, if we're doing a probability question, then this should be one because we know that all probabilities have to add up to one. Now, 23 participants like apples. A represents apples and A dash or A complement represents not liking apples. Obviously, they're not liking apples is the complement of liking apples. So 23 participants like apples. That means at the end of the A row, we'll put 23 in. If 30 participants do not like bananas, then we'll put 30 at the bottom of the B dashed column because B dashed or B complement represents not liking bananas. And 10 participants do not like both apples and bananas. So they don't like it. So if they don't like both apples and bananas, then we put 10 in here because A dash represents not liking apples, B dash represents not liking bananas. And this grid spot is where they both overlap i.e. the intersection. So we put 10 in there. Now, based on this information, we should be able to fill out the rest of the table because all the rows should add up to the last value in the row and all the columns should add up to the last values in the column. So for example, use a different color to represent what we calculated. So 10 is here 
and it adds up to 30. So we should know that this number is 20. Therefore, this number is three because three plus 20 is 23. This number will be 20 for the last row. This number should be 17 and therefore this number should be 27. And we could go ahead and double check and make sure that all the rows and all the columns add up to the last number in that co or co column or row. Now, with this table here, we should be able to answer these questions very easily. So it is a bit of an investment in your time. However, it will make the rest of the questions a lot easier. So how many, how many participants like apples and bananas? It's really easy to see that that's just three because that's the intersection of A and B, liking apples and liking bananas. So we can write it as A intersection B if we wanted to, equals three. How many participants like apples or bananas? So the or is implying that we should use the union. So we're calculating A union B. Now this is something that we can't read directly off the table, but we can use the values in the table to calculate this. There's actually a formula to calculate the union. It's called the addition rule, and it's equal to the individual elements added together, or the counts of them in this case, number of participants added together, minus the intersection. So this is called the addition rule. I believe it's on the formula sheet in VCU methods. So we can add A, which is 23, plus B, which is 20, minus the intersection, which we calculated before, three. So this ends up being 40. So 40 participants like apples or bananas. An alternative way of calculating this is we could have done 50 minus 10 because we were given the amount of people that don't like both apples and bananas. So if people aren't included in that group of not liking both apples and bananas, then obviously they like one or the other. So that would be uh, 50 minus 10, which is 40. Just another way of calculating it. Now, how many participants like apples but don't like bananas? This would be A intersection B dash. It's the intersection because both of them have to happen in this in the way that this question's worded. They like apples, but they don't like bananas. It kind of implies that both need to happen, which implies intersection. So it's A intersection B dash, which is 20. Last question, if one participant is randomly chosen from this study, what is the probability of them liking apples, or sorry, liking bananas and not liking apples? Okay, I got a bit confused with that one because all the other questions that had apples and bananas, this one, bananas and apples. I think I made this question on purpose, so, uh, so it's a bit of a trick, but that's okay. So what is the probability of a random person from the study liking bananas and not liking apples? So again, both need to happen. We're essentially finding the probability of A dashed, because we're not liking bananas, intersection B, sorry, not liking apples, intersection with bananas, liking bananas. So in this case, it's the probability instead of the actual count. So because if we choose a random person, it would just be everyone's equally probable of being chosen. We could just do the number of people who fit into this set of not liking apples, but liking bananas from the table that's 17. And we divide that by the total number of participants, which is 50. And if we want to do this as a decimal, it'll be 0 